Ένα, ένα, δύο, στο, στο βάθος. Okay. Do you hear? Can you hear me? Okay. So you're a very lucky guy that I'll be talking uh, exclusively, you know, exclusively for you. But okay. <laughs> so I guess uh, I guess we're set, right? Okay. Uh, well then, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the K2 presentation for beginners. Uh, it's basically an introduction to K2, uh, the extension for uh, Joomla. So, uh, first of all, a minor introduction. Um, you know that these days uh, uh, we've seen the Joomla 1.6 release, the better one, and uh, everyone is uh, uh, very excited to see some new features, uh, but of course, there are more features that we can use now uh, with uh, Joomla 1.5, which is stable and uh, can be used on production websites. So what's the status uh, today with uh, Joomla? Let's see some facts. A Joomla content, as you know already, is, uh, uh, so to speak, uh, Spartan. It means that uh, it has very little uh, elements that make up the articles in Joomla. And thus, it cannot be compared to other CMSs like uh, Drupal or WordPress, which are far more uh, social. Uh, they have comments by default. Uh, they, have, uh, they can be extended in several ways, and so on. And in order for us Joomla people to build websites and uh, simulate the master functionality that websites, uh, including blogging or rich media, uh, require, uh, we actually need to install dozens of extensions within Joomla to achieve what others can do with uh, just default installations of uh, the Drupal CMS or perhaps the WordPress CMS, if we're talking about blogging. And of course, the resulting package for Joomla is uh, somewhat uh, limited and definitely very difficult uh, to maintain. It's difficult because not only you have uh, Joomla to, uh, you know, uh, take care of about and uh, uh, make sure that it's uh, updated uh, constantly and that it's updated to uh, the right update release. But you also have to uh, worry about the extensions as well, the many extensions. This is where K2 comes in. This, uh, this May, um, basically in, in this May, we're, uh, we're happy to have K2 for uh, a little more than a year. Uh, it's become very popular, very successful, and uh, we call it a content management uh, component, content component for Joomla, with uh, some CCK-like uh, features. Now, before I continue, I'd like to know more or less uh, your uh, level of uh, expertise. How many of you know K2 already and uh, probably used it in one website at least, or at least tested it? So quite a few. Even you, Mr. Flexicon, did. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so uh, more or less you know what K2 is, but I'll just jump into some uh, quick statistics uh, to give you an idea of where we are today with K2. Uh, in um, uh, around March, we closed the first year of K2, publicly available, and it uh, surpassed 200,000 downloads. That's uh, quite an impressive mark for uh, just a single extension. And uh, not only that, uh, it's also been nominated here at the Jane Beyond Awards uh, for uh, Best uh, Component, along with uh, Flexi Content, uh, Docman, and other components. Um, and uh, it had uh, a very successful uh, community, which is also nominated for best uh, community uh, here at the Jane Beyond event. The K2 community has uh, now about 6,000 members. Uh, most of them are basically not so much end users, but uh, uh, developers and integrators of Joomla websites of a certain level and above. Uh, which makes us uh, double happy, aside K2 success, K2 success with all these thousands of downloads. Uh, we are fortunate to have uh, experienced people within the community that constantly, constantly exchange knowledge with each other. So, 
not just 200,000 downloads. We have already 11 template clubs uh, supporting K2 one way or another. Some have uh, created uh, templates that take, take into account uh, K2's uh, some, some basic needs, basically. And some other templates clubs have gone further and actually provided overrides, HTML overrides, as we call them, uh, for their templates to skin K2 even further. Uh, Joomlart is uh, one of the latest clubs that supported uh, K2, and they're here as well today. So I guess if you, can, if you have questions, they, they're one of the top template clubs uh, for Joomla in the world. Uh, it might be worthy. So um, what else? So we have uh, 65 uh, uh, plus extensions at the Joomla extensions directory listed that support, again, in one way or another, K2 or uh, interconnect with K2. Uh, we also have K2 translated in multiple languages. There are uh, some communities, uh, local communities, like the Dutch community, for example, uh, that make sure the right file, the languages, the language files are always updated when a new release comes out. And the good thing is that K2 is finally being used by thousands of websites. Uh, there are many prominent websites using K2 as well. And we are also fortunate enough to have two of the most high traffic Joomla websites ever built um, using K2 as well. So let's see what, uh, if, if I, the, these, the, the high traffic websites are uh, gazeta.gr, that's a sports website in Greece. It was also featured uh, by Steve Birch on Joomla.org. Um, gazeta does around uh, 5.5 uh, million visitors per month. And there's the TNA website, uh, tnarrestling.com, which does around 2 point, uh, no, it's now close to 3 million users, uh, visitors per month. These are stock Joomla websites uh, built completely around K2, its modules, and all the templating flexibility that we have with K2. The other websites that you may have seen um, here and there is uh, some template uh, clubs have already switched to K2 because it's easier for them to present their templates. Uh, we are fortunate to have uh, the Gorillas band using K2. That's one of my favorite bands as well. Um, and uh, like I said, thousands of websites uh, being, using uh, K2 and making use of its uh, functionality and what it offers to uh, developers and end users, of course. So let's see briefly as this is a beginner session for K2, what, what someone can do with, uh, by installing the K2 extension. I will be referring to K2 as an extension because it's a bundle, basically, of a component with some modules and some plugins. So using K2, you can easily create a uh, portal or magazine with author blogs. A nice example is the upcoming uh, Joomla community magazine website, which we're building for the organization. It's completely based off K2, and uh, it's, got, it's a multi-author environment. Uh, many will be contributing articles from the front end, others from the back end, and it's, uh, it, has all the, it, it covers all the requirements that you'd expect from a magazine website. You can also use K2 to build a catalog. Like I said, many template clubs have, used, uh, have been using uh, K2 now to present their templates. Namely, if I recall properly, uh, Joomla Praise is using K2 extensively for, their, uh, for uh, presenting their templates. And of course, you can uh, easily make use of K2's nested level, categories, uh, nested level categorization system to create a showcase of products, your work portfolio, whatever. We also have it's, it's very easy to start a blog with K2. It's a lot easier uh, going into WordPress and learning WordPress and all the quirks that it has. Let's not forget that Joomla is a very powerful CMS, um, not because it has, say, the best templates or um, it's a complete content management system. It's great because it has a, a, a fabulous uh, API. It's the, the core of Joomla. 
is a lot better compared to Drupal or WordPress for developers because it's a lot easier to build powerful applications uh, faster. So don't go looking at WordPress. Just, just install K2. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's the easiest, perhaps, application that you can uh, have with uh, to, to, to use it as a blog. Of course, when we're talking about K2 and the fact that it's ha it has a nested level uh, categorization system, of course, you can use K2 as a knowledge base. Uh, there's a big software company in Greece uh, called SoftOne that's using K2 completely for its knowledge base. Uh, we're talking about thousands of articles. It can easily replace a download or document manager. Uh, you can use it for directory listings and uh, any other associated uh, listing like events, uh, promotions or whatever. So let's see uh, the features that K2 has by default. Like I already mentioned, it has uh, nested level categories. We have comment system, uh, a tagging uh, system by default. There's the extra field system, which can extend uh, the K2 items, as we call them. We don't have the term article, because uh, you can use K2 for more than article developing, for uh, more than article making. Um, and uh, this uh, extra field system is similar to uh, what we call CCK for Drupal. Uh, CCK stands for construction a content construction kit. It's basically a way, it's a, basically a plugin, a module for uh, the Drupal CMS that uh, extends the base forms of articles. So we have a similar system for uh, K2 as well. And what that means is that you can uh, start with a basic form, like Joomla's uh, article form, and uh, aside the title, the uh, content image or whatever you have, you can create new fields that you can use on your websites. So for example, imagine a uh, uh, website devoted to film reviews. Having additional information about uh, the cast of the movie, of the film, the director, and so on. Uh, these, these fields are created in the back end, and they are represented in the front end as well, which makes it very easy, especially for uh, editors to uh, quickly add content, add and edit content, of course. Now, we've uh, put a lot of weight into the editorial work that's been done normally in magazines and the portals and basically multi-author environments. That is why we have some extra features that we wanted by default to make the life of editors easier when managing content. That's why we also have the item image, as we call it, which is a uh, very simple way to upload an image and have the image uh, placed in a position that the developer has chosen and not wherever the editor w wants the image to be. Uh, that, of course, also solves the problem of resizing the image, which makes uh, websites uh, behave uh, better performance-wise. We also have image galleries. Just upload a zip file of images and the K2 item form, uh, the K2 item will simply display the gallery in a nice way. We have videos. Again, for all these things, we have fields where you can just type in a URL or a, a code or embed code or whatever and uh, have the video represented in the front end as well. And we have attachments as well. The, that, that's why I, I, I previously mentioned that we can you can use K2 to replace a download or a document manager. Other important stuff on K2, we have uh, user profiles and blogs by default. That means whenever you see, uh, whenever you read uh, K2 content and you click on an author's name, you c uh, this author always has a page, uh, like, a, like a personal blog, uh, where uh, all his uh, items are uh, gathered, and uh, we can even extend this even further. Th so this just uh, ties down to the fact that um, K2 is really a, a social extension in the sense that you can use it to uh, build a magazine, a portal, in the classic sense, but you can also have more social features like personal blogs for users and so on. 
What's also important uh, is the ACL system that we've built into K2. ACL stands for access control level. It's uh, basically a way to uh, let people manage content from the front end with some specific uh, criteria. As you know, Joomla doesn't have an ACL system by default, like uh, some other CMSs do already, um, which makes it a bit um, limiting, even, even managing uh, uh, default Joomla articles. So what we've done is that we've built uh, a simple ACL system where you can assign users to some user groups, and then these user groups have specific um, permissions, actions, to specific tasks. So for example, a user group of uh, Joomla users within K2 can, for example, add new items, new articles in the front, through, through the front end, and they can edit their own articles. You, we can have a different group as well that can add, edit uh, their own articles and edit the articles of other people as well. So this is an ideal group, say, for uh, editors in chief. We also uh, can extend even further this, um, uh, this ACL thing and um, we can build, for example, a small community because we can have uh, ACL allowing if users, for example, can add comments or not. Uh, and the list goes on. Other features. The front-end editing that I mentioned, uh, it's completely Ajax-based. It's uh, complete, completely uh, template unobtrusive, meaning that it doesn't interfere with uh, uh, any template because it have all the editing functionalities in the front end are done in a model box. That means that uh, uh, users follow a very similar approach to editing in the front end like with the Drupal CMS, meaning that there are some buttons that when you click on the uh, next to the title of its uh, K2 item, there's a button, add or edit, you can click on that and a model box opens up so you can edit your content. It's completely, uh, it's very easy for template designers especially uh, as it does not mix within the, 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 the complete, the, the rest of the template. We have a powerful plugin system which uh, we use to extend the item, the category and the user forms. Item and category are like article and category in Joomla. So we can write plugins that operate in the back end and extend these uh, forms, the item and the category forms. We can extend the item, of course, using the, uh, the extra fields uh, system that K2 has. But if you have uh, the ability to do this with a plugin system, it's more flexible and uh, you can use um, uh, uh, a programmatic logic to uh, create features that are more, uh, more advanced. We also have the comments, uh, an Ajax-based comments moderation option uh, for the front end. That means that when, uh, uh, in the case of a magazine website, for example, people that contribute articles are able to moderate the comments to their articles as well. So they, when, they, when someone logs in from the front end and uh, in K2, they have a small module that's like a dashboard menu and they can do all these sorts of operations from the front end. And one of the last things that we added is a Google Ajax search integration. Um, it, it was uh, something that we had to add because, first of all, Joomla's uh, search is a bit slow if we're talking about web, big websites. And it's not so smart in, in the essence of that uh, you cannot uh, uh, like, uh, type uh, normal phrases or questions as you would do with Joomla, with uh, Google, sorry. Now, what, what are the features that we love about K2? Um, I'm, I'm actually thinking that I should perhaps show you K2 for five minutes uh, in the beginning, then discuss all that, but it's, uh, you'll see it uh, in a while. Uh, we have uh, front-end theming, which is a little bit different compared to other components. It's different because um, it's easier to be, uh, to be exact. We have this concept of sub-templates because we wanted to use K2 as a tool to build several different sections within your website. 
Uh, when I say sections, I mean that you can have your uh, article system, your articles, you can have your downloads, um, your uh, documentation, knowledge base, or whatever, and your blogs. So if you have, if you're using one extension to do four different things, you should be able to style these four different things differently. So this is what the, um, the MVC subtemplating functionality in K2 does. You can create a menu item that points to a category. This category uh, is, uh, say, a catalog, and you can create a specific template within K2 for this, uh, for this catalog. Uh, likewise, you can create a different menu item pointing to a K2 category that's for documentation or knowledge base and have that category as well pick a different uh, sub-template within K2. When I'm saying sub-template, I basically mean the styling of K2 only, not the entire styling of Joomla. This is something that's coming in Joomla 1.6, but it's not something, uh, something uh, you know, new. The, it was always there. You could always assign a different Joomla template to a menu item. But with K2, this, this is different. You have your... Um, say your uh, your template uh, view, your, your template window, and you can have different stylings within the K2, uh, the K2 output. That's what we love personally. It's the, it's the, uh, the most important feature for us when building websites. And it's uh, nice to see that people are starting to, to grasp this concept as well. Another feature that's related uh, more to content structuring is uh, the fact that you can create a template category. It's not related to Joomla templates or K2 templates or whatever. We're referring to template as uh, the word, the, the word template. You can have a template category with some pre-assigned parameters and we can use this uh, category um, to rapidly create uh, tree structure uh, with uh, nested level categories. So for example, if I'm building a uh, knowledge base category with say 100 subcategories inside in many levels, I just, you'd expect that the knowledge base has the same styling in all pages, right? There's no point in the, uh, say, showing the title on the parent category of the knowledge base and not showing it on the sub subcategories. So you just set up your parameters, what to show, the title, the, the, the content, the video, the image, or whatever. You can set this up on the parent category and have this parent category act as a template. And you can assign the features, the, the parameter setup of this category to all the subcategories, which makes it extremely easy to create uh, big trees of categories uh, very fast. This is an editorial thing, but it's, uh, you definitely see that uh, when you're building websites that have uh, lots of content, editors actually appreciate it. The other thing that we like is the K2 plugin API. Um, we've already released our first uh, plugin to showcase uh, how we can extend K2. It's, a, uh, it's called User Extended Fields for K2. And what it basically does is that it adds some fields in the profile, the Joomla user profile, that you can add uh, links to social services and uh, other stuff. We also um, like K2's built-in extended caching mechanism. This is uh, obviously something that was created for performance reasons. Uh, we're also performance junkies as well. So uh, we built uh, the, this mechanism so that we can update Joomla's cache selectively. What that means is that, I'll, I'll give you a simple example. If, you, if you're running a website, a popular website, uh, with considerable amount of articles in Joomla, and one editor goes inside some item to edit it, or they add a new item. Now, if the Joomla cache is on, when they click on save, the entire uh, cache for the articles will be deleted. Now, when, you're, uh, when you have a popular website with uh, thousands of users, concurrent users, 
that's no option. Um, if, if the entire cache is deleted, the server will uh, run out of resources trying to recreate the caching, uh, the, cache, the cache documents from Joomla. So what we've done with K2 is that uh, we have this uh, concept of uh, uh, selective uh, cache update, which means that if an editor edits a specific item in K2, then the cache for this item only will be refreshed and not the entire cache of K2. So like I said, this is a performance feature and uh, not just that, the entire structure of K2, programmatically speaking, is built in such a way that it's uh, optimized as much as possible within Joomla's uh, limits, of course, uh, to be able to serve thousands of pages uh, concurrently. And the last and most important thing is that people that choose to uh, use K2 now with Joomla 1.5, they will be the most fortunate ones when Joomla 1.6 comes out. That's because we're not changing the database scheme, and if we do, we will do it in such a way that it's easy to update. So the people that have their K2 content in 1.5, Joomla 1.5, they will be, they will, it will be very easy for them to migrate it to 1.6 uh, when it's uh, publicly available as a stable version. So there are three, uh, three uh, things to consider when asking yourself why use K2. The most important thing is the fact that Joomla has left behind, has been left behind over other competing CMSs like Drupal and WordPress in uh, terms of uh, uh, content richness, uh, social features and uh, flexibility like nested level categorizations, ACL, the expansion capabilities. Uh, Drupal is a little bit, little bit more, uh, it's, it's gone far ahead, to be honest, compared to Joomla. Uh, but that's, that's not a, um, a claim to say that uh, Drupal, Drupal is better. It's just that development is, uh, is very slow and uh, features don't come, in slow, uh, don't come in very often because there's a very bureaucratic um, procedure making in Joomla as, the, as an organization which overall makes things very difficult to, uh, to improve. The other important thing is that we have Joomla 1 and 1.5 which are practically the same in features for the end user. Uh, it's, it's been like that almost since the Mambo days. And um, with the upcoming 1.6, the only new thing that end user will see meaning the people that actually manage the content of the websites, is the nested level categorization in Joomla and the ACL, which is basically, they will either see it or they won't, <laughs> depending on the, uh, the permissions that they have. So these are the only two things that are being added into 1.6. We don't have tags, we don't have comments like they were promised to be added. And uh, not just that, there's no change in, uh, in, in many other things. So using K2 is a, uh, is a logical uh, way out of all of these bad things that occur within Joomla. And like I said, slow development cycle for Joomla. Uh, all this uh, decision making that goes on for ages and ages. It took 1.5, like three years to be released. So if uh, the event place permits us, we can see K2 in action. It doesn't permit us, so let's... <laughs> it's it, K2 is so social that it uses some services, but uh, yeah, we use uh, Gravatar um, avatar images if they're available, uh, but um, this is embarrassing. Uh, <laughs>
Θε να φωνάξει λίγο το Ρόμπερτ, να δούμε κάτι γιατί δεν παίζει. Yes. No, no, no. It's it's completely different. Uh, Joomla's uh, ACL defines uh, uh, it defines access uh, controls in the front end and the back end for components and some specific tasks within components. But K2's ACL is mainly for the front end part of K2. So it's like consider this as an application with its own ACL. You set up your your groups, your K2 user groups, and you assign them to specific rights. So you have a magazine website that's got um, uh, your simple authors, the editors, the publishers, and so on. This is, uh, this is completely different, so uh, it will not affect or uh, interfere with Joomla's uh, ACL in 1.6. It will stay separate. Yes, uh, and it's actually, uh, it will actually complement K2 because uh, that way we will be able to, uh, so to speak, define similar access groups in the back end as well. So now, I mean, people that have access in the back end of Joomla, they can see everything. They can, uh, uh, if they're managers and above, they can, uh, uh, they, can, they can see the entire content of K2, aside some very important features like uh, parameters, uh, user groups, and so on. With Joomla's uh, ACL in 1.6, we will be able to uh, even uh, disallow access to specific categories in the back end. Okay. Almost. So this is uh, not such a bad example, not such a good example. I should show you this one. But I doubt it will load. It does. But then again, uh, it's on a 800 pixels. Thank God for Firefox's zoom out capability. Okay, so. Check this out. This is, this is a K2 website. This is the Gazeta website that I was uh, talking about earlier. Uh, it's got more than 60, 70,000 articles, I think. Uh, more than 100,000 comments. It's, um, I think, in the top 15 websites in Greece now. And uh, what you see here is completely K2 if you can get past all those banners and uh, other elements. The only thing that we honor from Joomla, aside, uh, of course, the API and the core and all that, is the contact uh, component. Because we always, uh, we are um, people that, uh, you know, we like simplicity, and the, the contact component in Joomla is, uh, is always our favorite. So as you can see, this, this website is um, using K2, it's completely optimized for, for what it does, meaning that we have all these images in different dimensions, text with different elements, titles, uh, content, link to comments. Um, here we have just the image and the title. You know, we can do all these sorts of customizations with K2 in a way that it's uh, simply not possible with, uh, with uh, Joomla's uh, core articles. And of course, the social features that I've been talking about and the richness of the uh, K2 item are uh, easy to spot on the main item page when it loads. So you can imagine the thing that I was discussing earlier about uh, K2's selective, uh, K2's extended cache with uh, being able to selectively delete cast items. 
in, in a website like that with more than 60,000 uh, articles, if you edit an item and the complete cache gets deleted, the server will uh, you know, go down on its knees begging for resources. It's, uh, it's not an option. So you can see the templating is a lot different. Some say it doesn't look like Joomla. That's, that's what we hear often. The Gorillas website. Okay, you clearly don't understand. That's Joomla as well. People use, use uh, K2 for various, uh, to do various stuff. Um, let me show you a different example. Okay, this is for a portal, as you can see. Basically using default content, a uh, default styling from uh, K2. I actually think the San Diego city just switched to Joomla and K2. Okay, this is the San Diego website. It's, it's using K2 uh, as of recently. And this is a nice website as well, the Asterisk, from the UK, which was, uh, which was also awarded um, by the Daily Telegraph, I recall, one of the best sites uh, for uh, culture in the UK this year. The people that built this website have supported K2, uh, meaning you know that they've they've used K2 extensively since their uh, since its beginning, almost its beginning. And it clearly showcases what what you can do with uh, with K2. The good thing about all these implementations is that uh, developers uh, basically use K2 for everything. So. Uh, if we're talking about content websites, you know, like magazines and uh, portals or whatever, uh, they, they can use completely, uh, they can cover K2, with K2 their needs at a rate of more than 90%, which is, which is very good, of course, because uh, it's, it's, if you think about it, it's quite simple. Uh, you just install Joomla, you install K2, and then you can start building your websites uh, without being limited in one way or another. Sorry, what? Does it support multiple languages? No, K2 follows the uh, Joomla's component, gui component guidelines, meaning that it's strictly for one language if you use Joomla as it is. But if you add Joomfish, you can use Joomfish to translate K2 in multiple languages. Um, remember any example of K2 in multiple languages? Uh, all in all, you know, Joomfish just works fine with uh, K2. Software is done.
this is the website of the this is the website of the software company that I mentioned in the beginning um, using Joomla for everything for uh, displaying their news, their blogs, and their knowledge base. So this is an article. Okay. <laughs> Not translated, <laughs> but it's there. That's that's the point. It's there. So I will try to show you the back end of K2. Uh, I'm saying I will try because the viewport is very small, so it's quite difficult, especially holding this thing. Do you have any questions? So when you install K2, you will see uh, it will auto-install a module that which is very similar to uh, the Joomla uh, uh, quick icon module. And it uh, basically has the most important features for managers. This is a default, uh, this is a module that comes in by default with Joomla, with uh, K2. And uh, it's ideal for uh, you know, your editors to, com to edit content directly. When you go to the K2 component, you'll see that it resembles Joomla's uh, front end, uh, fr uh, Joomla's uh, dashboard page on the back end. Again, we have the main functionality here, and some statistics, some uh, additional information. What's also important about K2 and the fact that it's, you know, gone quite popular is the fact that it's very, very similar and very close to uh, K2, to how Joomla articles work. So if you see the list, for example, of articles, of items, it's exactly the same. It's almost the same as Joomla. Well, of course, that, that one is empty. So it's a familiar interface. Uh, we have, of course, the nested level category system. Tags, uh, comments, comment moderation, Ajax-based. Users, these are basically Joomla users that we can uh, extend with K2, much like other components do already. And we also have the user groups let me show you. Um, so for example, this, this part up to here, this part up to here is default K2 profiles. We add the gender, the K2 user group, and the description and image and URL. But using the K2 plugin API, we can easily extend this to furthermore. And all this information is uh, viewable, of course, in the front end as well. Let me show you. You can see these icons here, the details. They come from here.
the user groups are primarily used for the ACL system. Like I said, the tasks, what you can do, uh, the, the main actions uh, are here, and we can create a group with specific permissions, assign these permissions to specific categories as well, or all categories, and, all, and then all users that belong to this group will simply uh, get these permissions assigned. The exofield system is uh, also very simple. We can uh, create, um, say, uh, fields, additional fields that go into the item form page of uh, various various types. Like we can create text fields, big text areas, drop-down selections, and so on. And we can see. Let me show you how this looks in the form page in the item form page. This is how they look. We can create fields that get added into this tab. Of course, this is what I was uh, going to plan to show you last, the item page. We've, uh, we've gathered what's more, most important in the f uh, at the left of the menu uh, in K2, in the K2 backend. And um, <clears throat> Like I said, we've made things in such a way that they are as familiar as possible to users, uh, to Joomla users. So we've kept the item edit page as closer as possible to the Joomla uh, article uh, form. And what I'm saying as possible is because we have all these additional information like the tags, um, the, uh, the tabs here with additional content. So it's less, the, sa the same pattern with Joomla, meaning it's, it's, it's familiar, it's easy to use. And we have all this additional information in the tabs there. The item image, like I mentioned, image gallery, we can upload a zip file and uh, the images will get extracted. Let me show you a feature rich article. So it's our content, the image, the image gallery. We just upload a zip file and it gets extracted. The video tab. Okay, we can use all sorts of, uh, various sorts of ways to add video. We can upload video. We can even browse the server for videos, existing videos. This is a new feature that's been added in version 2.3. Or we can directly embed a video code. The extra fields, like I mentioned, as you can see here, the fields are different compared to the previous item that I showed you. And we can have attachments as well with some statistics too. You can see that there's a downloads counter. Like I said, there are over 65 extensions that already hook up with K2 in one way or another. So it's very easy, for example, for someone, for some developer to create a component that reads the uh, database of K2 and creates a statistics page of all the downloads. So this could easily complement K2 as a download manager. So this is something simple that, that one developer could create for, uh, for their client, for example, without creating a new component or uh, uh, using a component uh, like uh, Docman or whatever uh, and having to uh, train their clients to use it. It's like a core application that uh, can easily be extended. And uh, if people know how to use this, uh, then it's easy for developers to add new stuff in the easy way. Yes? Uh, there, like I said, uh, within those 65 plus extensions, there, are, there is a Google Maps plugin, which basically adds uh, a box. Let me show you. It basically adds a box within the content tab where you can just paste the Google Maps embed code and then it prints it on the front end as well. 
So see all these uh, all these details here. They can easy, they easily show here. Let me show you. This is more or less a uh, K2 item uh, in full. The the item toolbar, rating, image, content, the extended fields, the uh, extra field, sorry, some information about the article, like where it's published, uh, tags, information about the user, latest items from the user, related items by tag, the video, the image gallery, the comments, it's all there. So, um, like I said, this is an introduction to K2. So there are some of you that view, have used K2 already, and we're going to discuss more in-depth advice on K2 and uh, tips and useful information on the uh, presentation that's uh, on uh, Tuesday. Uh, there, of course, you'll be able to, we will be able to answer to you questions on any level, either design-related or uh, programming-related. So it's, uh, we make it easier for you, for people that use K2 already, uh, to dig deeper uh, into this component. Um, if, you, if you want to ask any more questions or uh, whatever, we're here. Yes. Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, rep yes. You're asking if we can use a preview image for videos? No, Is that? This, uh, this cannot be done uh, without special software on the server. Okay. If we could, uh, trust me, we'd, alwe we'd already have such functionality within uh, K2. It's a nice remark, however, and uh, it's something that we could consider. So uh, if we cannot create automatically a preview image of the video, we can add a simple uh, upload image functionality to use as a preview. So if you're, uh, if you're obviously using your own videos, you can easily grab a screenshot of the video using a program like uh, Videoland, VLC. Okay, it's, it's extremely easy. Upload the preview image and that's it. We, just, we have just focused on uh, you know, basically services like video providers like YouTube and others where we can fetch all these details uh, directly through their APIs in one way or another. Yes. What are the options for resize images? That's also a good question. Uh, we have, um, like I showed you before in uh, Gazetta, you will see that <coughs> we have this size, smaller. You see the same image here. There's an intermediate, uh, mid medium size, and uh, different ones here. What we do with K2 is that when you upload an image, we store the original and we create six uh, copies of it, six resized copies in different dimensions. The cool thing about K2 is that you can uh, use six predefined uh, dimensions for all categories, or you can assign different dimensions per category. <coughs> so that means that if you have a, um, uh, a uh, news category in your uh, website, K2 website, you can use a specific set of six of these six dimensions for small to extra large. And if you have a knowledge base category, you can have completely different dimensions, but you'll get all six of them. And you can select these images, the, the, the size of the image, 
through the modules or the component, whatever that's possible. So for example, in this component, in this module, uh, we've selected to show, for example, the small uh, resized copy with a title and a few and some, the first six words. So it's very, it's very flexible. And uh, if you decide to change at some point, you know, the dimensions used for that, you can simply assign the new dimensions within the, the category's parameters, and they will simply uh, get reflected on the front end. So if tomorrow, say, the people that operate this website ask us to, instead of using uh, six, use four with bigger images, we will just change in the category parameter <laughs> the size of, no, no, in the module, we will just use a different size or select through the category to define new sizes for this specific uh, uh, dimension. We use the term to make this easy for users. And since we have six resized copies, uh, we use terms like extra small, small, medium, uh, large, extra large, and uh, super extra large, something like that. So <laughs> it's, yes, yes. You configure this. Uh, you configure this and the components main configuration, which is in the back end in the top right, or you can configure. You can override this basic configuration in each category. We just give it names so that it's easier for uh, people to uh, to identify the right size. Let me show you. See, item extra small image width. These are the defaults, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. Uh, and we have the generic uh, image width. This, that's the sixth size, which is used in tags, searches, basically listing of uh, filtered uh, results. So if we, if you go here and say, uh, if we click a tag, this will bring basically filter items by this tag, and the this image size is the generic uh, the generic uh, size as defined here. This one. In this uh, in this version, we just do HTML resizing. But there's, uh, there are thoughts within version two to build such a mechanism that if you change the dimensions, the system will reprocess all the images. But if you have a big website, you don't want to do this when it changes. You wanna, we, we still need to figure out a simple and, but smart way to, to be able to, to do such uh, uh, changes. It's really worth uh, looking at uh, going at the K2 website. Okay, we have uh, grouped all the resources, all the possible resources there for you. And we also have here at the bottom right, it's the latest uh, release of K2 from the development server. If you want to test out new things, they are always safe, but if you use uh, K2 on a production website, it's always best not to use development releases for various reasons. You can check out the website, getk2.org, and the community. I've shown you the demo already, and uh, our community, which is quite big, quite vibrant. And there we got all sorts of new stuff being, uh, basically all the news are uh, uh, posted there. The old resizing is done by width. Because that's the, that's the most important thing in, in all websites. It's how much wide the website is. So uh, you typically do resizing by width. If someone, if you want an image that's, you know, like too much widescreen, uh, then uh, you have to prepare your template in such a way 
that it can accept um, you know, such images. Otherwise, it will look bad, meaning that, for example, imagine if this image was like up to here. Okay? It wouldn't look good. So you know, you, most of the times you know what your target image is, you know your content. So you know what images you'll be uploading. If you want to do something like that for a specific uh, category, you know, you want to add more style to your pages, their product pages or whatever, um, you can pick this image up and use it as a background image. So you can define your own uh, block in such a way and put it as a background so that it doesn't look bad. There are all sorts of ways to do this. I mean, if I recall, in soft one, Uh, let me show you a new website we built that I know of. This is a classic example of a uh, magazine website, portal-like. Now, check this out. The images here, as you can see, they have the same dimensions. See, they're identical. What we do is that this is a module, okay? This is a K2 module that has some parameters. It's the mode K2 content module. And you can select a category and fetch information from this category. In this case, we fetch the image and uh, the title and the first 20 words, okay, with the date. So what we did is we create an MVC template for the module that instead of printing the image as an image tag, it uh, appends it as a background image to a simple div block. So we give you the tools already to do your work one way or another. But if you want to do you know, fancy stuff, there's always, there's always the option to do this on a template level. This website is also developed in K2 completely came to K2. Menus, uh, these blocks, the slideshows here, uh, these elements as well. And we have, actually this is a, a great showcase of how you can use K2 to extend it to a different application. Uh, this website has a <clears throat> something like an entertainment guide. Uh, you can find restaurants, theaters, movies, and so on. And we've used K2 to have the content inside, like new movies get added in K2. And then we've, used, we've created a component that can list the movies um, in like, uh, let me show you. Yes. So this is a special module that will bring up a K2 item, item the video. The details of the extra component that get uh, that means with uh, K2, and then comments. So what this does, what this says is, uh, this movie is played in these cinemas, and now we can click on the cinema, and read some details. we hook up the other component into K2 by using a K2 plugin. So we've mostly thought of, you know, 99% of what, what will be, what could be uh, requested in any such website. I think we've uh, <clears throat> reached the end of the presentation. So if you want to ask any additional questions, I'll be happy to answer them.